Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture of electronic devices. Today we are starting a new chapter on diodes. Um, okay. And this is lecture number one. Okay, so let's start. So what is a diode? Um, diode. It's a two terminal. It's a two terminal device do you guys know any other two terminal device other two terminal devices is a resistor right um, and this is another two terminal device so if i have to make a comparison in terms of its output characteristics then a diode is a non-linear two-terminal device, while resistor with a linear two-terminal device. Why I'm calling it the linear? Because its output characteristics or its VI characteristics, here's a voltage, here's a current, is linear. Right? Because of Ohm's law, V equals IR. <coughs> And we will very soon in this lecture realize that when we are going to plot the characteristics of a diode, they will be nonlinear. Uh, so that is why diode is a two terminal nonlinear uh, device. I can just show you very briefly how does it look like. <coughs> so the characteristics. So this is the ideal diode characteristics. And as we can see over here, the current through the diode is zero when the voltage across it is less than zero and the current exponentially rises. Over here, it's just a step function in case of a ideal diode. Um, uh, right at when the voltage across it will become equals to zero or greater than zero volts. So we're going to discuss more about this nonlinear behavior of this diode and why does that happen. Um, okay, so in terms of applications, diode is one of the very useful components in electronic devices while building circuits and a lot. And we are going to discuss a lot of applications as well. So one of the very important application is rectification, which means converting AC to DC. <coughs> so we can convert our AC waveforms to a DC waveform by a process known as rectification and diode is central to it. We use diode as a building block to develop these rectifier circuits. We can also use it as clippers to develop these clipper circuits where we can clip the waveforms at specific voltage values that we need. So we can use it as a clipper uh, Similarly, we and other waveforming. So essentially, this comes under the category of waveforming functions. So essentially, we can cut and clip the waveforms, right? For example, if you have a waveform like this, we can cut it over here, or we can cut it over here. So we can we can do this different uh, clippings of these waveforms. So that is why we can use it for these functions as well. We can also build logic gates using diode we're gonna we're gonna also see an example probably in the next lecture how we can build logic gates uh, using diode so diode is one of the most important one of the most important components of the electronic devices in terms of building the circuits and we are going to do a bunch of these examples in this chapter to see how we can use these diodes to build such circuits <coughs> excuse me <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so let's look at <coughs> the characteristics of an ideal diode. Characteristics of an ideal diode. Let's start with a symbol. So symbol of a diode is this. As you can see, it's a two terminal device. Here are the two terminals. <clears throat> this terminal is usually known as anode and this terminal 
as cathode. <coughs> so let's call the potential difference across the diode terminals to be V volts. Now if the voltage over here is less than zero volts, the current through the diode will become zero and diode behaves like a open circuit. Uh, let's let's call it as a V. Now if V becomes equal to zero or greater than zero, then the current will start to flow through the diode and the diode will behave like a short circuit. <coughs> Again, this is an ideal diode, and we are going to see that our real diode behaves slightly different. <coughs> right? So this diode says that, that for example, let me let me draw the VI characteristics. Then I think uh, I am going to explain this again, and it will be easier. So what did I just write over here? I said that when my voltage is less than zero, my current is zero. So current is all zero as the voltages are less than zero. And this goes on. And right at zero voltage, the current will start to flow exponentially. And over here, it's it looks like a step function. <clears throat> so this is the um, VI characteristics of the diode. So at less than zero volts, it behaves as an open circuit. And when the current will start to flow through it, as soon as the voltage becomes equal to zero across the diode terminals, <coughs> our current will start to flow and it will behave like a short circuit. <coughs> okay. Uh, another important thing over here is that this region when the current was flowing right when current is greater than zero this condition is known as a forward bias or the diode is said to be forward biased and when the current is zero and the potential is negative across the diode then the diode is said to be reverse biased so these are the two conditions in which we can operate the diode. We can operate the diode as a forward bias or in reverse bias condition. If the potential drop across the diode is positive, then it is said to be positive forward biased. If it is negative, then it will be reverse biased. <coughs> now let's look at it. Uh, <coughs> so if I look at this waveform or this IV characteristics, I can see that this is highly nonlinear. And just another, uh, making another small note over here that this kind of a nonlinear response is known as a piecewise linear. <clears throat> right? Uh, so a non linear response consisting of two line segments is called piecewise linear. <coughs> right, so essentially this VI characteristics of the diode is a nonlinear response, but since we can see that it is composed of two line segments. So if we are operating in any of these individual line segments, then we can potentially get a linear response. So this is what is called as a piecewise linear. So if you are operating in on one of the line segments, then this is, uh, that is where it is called as a piecewise linear. So we are going to discuss uh, the nonlinear response and, uh, and in detail uh, how we can uh, use the VI characteristics in a linear response as well in, um, during later parts of this chapter as well. So we're, we're gonna come back to this topic <clears throat> uh, again all right so let me uh tell you about the forward and the reverse bias one more time before we move on uh, it's a slightly different representation of what i just said uh told you about the forward bias 
so we can also see that for example this is our diode right and let's suppose this is the current that is flowing through the diode so if the potential drop across this v is a v over here right so if the potential drop is positive like this and it's not negative this means that it is forward bias and <coughs> excuse me and you can you can you can say that our diode is behaving like a switch <coughs> and this diode will become short circuit right so this is called uh, forward bias diode turn on diode is so we're going to use these different terms that diode is on means diode is forward biased <coughs> similarly again if we have a diode again like this and this is a current that is flowing potentially through the diode but now the this anode is connected to the negative terminal and this cathode is connected to the positive terminal such that v now potential drop across the diode is negative so this is a reverse bias condition and over here our diode will again behave like a switch but that switch will never close <coughs> and the current through the diode will be of course zero right so this is open circuit we can also call it a switch off we can also call it as cut off the diode is cut off or the diode is off so we're going to use these <coughs> excuse me so we're going to use these terms interchangeably you will also realize that the book also uses these terms interchangeably in the in the text right so we use the terms forward bias reverse bias or diode turn on and off or diode cut off uh, so we are going to use these terms yeah interchangeably so another one another implication that by now you have realized <coughs> from the VI characteristics of the diode is that we have an unlimited current that that flows through the diode right as soon as it turns on we have this exponentially increasing this is a step function at voltage equals to zero so how we can limit the current that is flowing through the diode because we don't want to uh, destroy our diode right okay so we can use an external circuit to limit forward current and reverse voltage <coughs> so essentially due to these characteristics we can see that we're gonna have a <coughs> exponentially increasing current <coughs> not even exponentially that we have a step function here <coughs> so if we have to limit this current or limit the reverse voltage over here right so this is the forward current sorry if we can also label it as an if and this is the reverse voltage that is appearing across the diode in the reverse bias condition and this current will flow through the diode in the forward bias condition so if we have to limit this forward current to the reverse voltage we need to connect the diode to an external circuit now we are going to do an example to see how this can be done so this is very simple we can connect this to our resistor and a supply here and this is just the ground <coughs> let's suppose this is one kilo ohms and our we have connected it to a 10 volt supply and <coughs> And let us suppose this is a current I that is flowing over here. Now looking at the circuit, I can see that my diode 
will become forward bias when I will connect my supply and the resistor in this condition. So the current that is going to flow through the resistor and through the diode because diode will become forward biased um, here. Uh, so when the diode will become forward bias, it will behave as a short circuit. So my current is going to be 10 divided by 1K, 10 milliamperes. So my diode is conducting on, over here the potential drop over here is zero, considering this is an ideal diode. Uh, in the next lectures, we are going to realize that it is slightly different when we are going to discuss the real diode. <coughs> right, and also we know that the current now is we have a limited current there is a limited current that flows through the diode now. <coughs> Flowing through the diode. <coughs> which is determined by external supply and resistor <coughs> so we can see over here that rather than having this a huge amount of current flowing through the diode now we have a limited current flowing through the diode because we have connected the diode with an external supply and a resistor so we have this 10 milliamperes that will flow through the diode when the diode will be forward bias or conducting on or forward bias right so we're going to use these terms interchangeably uh, so this is how we can use external supply and resistor to limit the current flowing through the through the diode. Let's do another example now, in which again we're going to connect a power supply or resistor, but uh, now the diode is connected opposite. <coughs> this is again plus ten volts. <coughs> <coughs> One kilo ohms resistor. And here's a current that, that potentially is going to flow over here. <clears throat> now, as we can see that, we are going to have a positive potential here and a negative potential here. Uh, right? So, if we have a positive potential at the cathode and a negative potential at the anode, this means that we have a reverse bias condition. Over here, our diode is reverse bias or off so it behaves as open circuit this means that the current no current is going to flow through the diode and the diode will be cut off All right, so here are, these are the couple of examples of how we can operate the diode in the forward bias condition and a reverse bias condition. And using this external supply voltage and a resistor, we can also limit the amount of the current that is flowing through the diode. Um, we are going to do another... <coughs> we're going to start with now applications of the diode. And I want to do one quick application and an example before wrapping up this lecture. Um, so let's start with the applications of the diode. <coughs> so the first application we're going to talk about is how we can use diode as a rectifier, uh, which means that convert AC to DC. <coughs> As you know, you may have realized now, there's a lot of applications of rectification in terms of, um, for example, power supplies. Um, <clears throat> either these, these are the DC power supplies for your laptops or for your mobile phones, you always connect them to the AC mains, but your battery requires a DC power to charge. So that small modules or uh, connectors are converting 
this AC mains to the DC voltages that are required. Towards the end of this chapter, we are going to design a power supply as well. Um, and rectifiers, which converts the AC into DC, is one, on one of the most important component of these power supplies and many other applications as well. Uh, and we will realize that, again, we can build these rectifier circuits using diodes. <coughs> Over here, uh, I am going to assume diode to be an ideal diode, and I'm just going to introduce the concept of rectification or rectifier circuits. And then in the subsequent lectures uh, or later part of this chapter, we are going to pick up from here and discuss rectification in more detail while designing the power supply. Over here, we are just I'm just introducing the concept of how we can use a diode to convert AC into DC. Okay, so let's suppose here is our circuit now. So we have a diode, resistor, and an input voltage connected there. <coughs> <coughs> so this is V naught. And the current flowing over here is ID. <clears throat> this is VI. And just assume that this is continuing. VP. All right. <coughs> <coughs> so assume this is a circuit over here. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so we have an input voltage VI that we are feeding to the circuit to this rectifier circuit, and our rectifier circuit just has a diode and a resistor connected to it. Um, right, so here's a diode and a resistor, and our input waveform is a regular sine wave. So, what will happen when, when our input voltage is greater or equal to zero volts? We discussed that right earlier, the diode will become forward bias. Right, diode will be forward biased or it will become short circuit. <coughs> so if the diode will become short circuit for this condition when VI is uh, equal to greater than zero, this means that our V naught output voltage will be equals to input voltage. And our VD potential drop across the diode will be zero volts. And what will be the current here? Our current ID will be equals to VI over resistance. All right, so let's plot the output now. V naught, this is T. <coughs> so during this part of the circle, waveform this positive cycle of the waveform my output is going to remain exactly the same the diode will be forward bias and i am going to get the same waveform back now when vi will become less than zero right diode will be reverse biased or diode will be off or it will become an open circuit. When diode will become an open circuit, this means that now the diode current flowing through the diode will become zero and our output voltage will become equals to zero as well. <coughs> so for this negative cycle now, right, for this negative cycle, for this entire negative cycle, the diode will behave as an open circuit. And when the diode is behaving as an open circuit, this means that my output during this entire cycle will remain zero. And then again, a positive cycle will come. So my um, diode again will start to conduct. A negative cycle will come. Diode again stops conducting. And this process is going to continue. <coughs> so this is how we can achieve this rectification now, as you can see. Then we are converting this AC waveform with the positive and negative waveforms to only positive waveforms, only this positive cycle of the sine wave. Um, so this is how we can convert AC into DC. We will see, of course, that in our actual power supplies, <coughs> we want a constant 
voltage rather than this time varying voltage so we will study, uh, we will see how we can convert that uh, this further into a constant uh, voltage uh, when we are designing the power supply later um, but here's the basic concept of a rectifier that we can use a diode to rectify or to convert the ac into dc in which for the positive cycles it is it stops connecting uh, it is connecting and for the negative cycle it stops connecting so this is what we get uh, again this is for the ideal diode we will realize that this waveform is slightly different when we are using our real diodes now i want to do uh, one quick example before wrapping up this lecture All right, so assume the circuit over here. <coughs> this is a source <coughs> or input voltage. The resistance is 100 ohms. <coughs> the current that is gonna flow through the diode is ID in forward bias condition. And we have connected another 12 volt supply here. <clears throat> assume Vs is sinusoid with 24 volts peak amplitude right so essentially Vs is right where we have 24 here and minus 24 here <coughs> So what we are interested in finding is we need to find a peak diode current and maximum reverse bias voltage, <coughs> right? <clears throat> so we can find the peak diode current when the diode is forward biased. We can find the reverse bias voltage when the diode is reverse biased, all right? So let's do the first one. <clears throat> Peak diode current will be when diode is forward biased. And for a peak diode current, we will have a peak. Peak diode current will be achieved when our Vs will be peak current will be when our Vs amplitude is maximum, right? So this means that my Vs will be 24 volts peak. <clears throat> so the peak diode current will be two things. Our Vs will be this and, <coughs> and we're going to have a forward bias condition. Fb is forward biased here. So the diode current will become equals to 24 volts minus 12 volts divided by 100 ohms. Again, in a forward bias condition, your diode will be short circuit uh, in for our ideal diode. So the current that is going to come out to be is 0.12 amperes. So this is a peak diode current that will flow uh, through the circuit or through the diode uh, in this example. Now let's find the <coughs> maximum reverse voltage. Maximum reverse voltage will happen when Vs is at its negative peak right so this means that the value is going to be minus 24 volts and then we have another minus 20 volts so the total voltage so the total reverse bias voltage so reverse bias maximum voltage will be 12.24 36 volts right so this 36 volt will, will, will appear uh, in the opposite pull with the opposite polarity across the diode <coughs> so this will be the maximum reverse bias voltage that will appear uh, with the negative polarity 
across the diode right so if this is the anode this is a cathode so i'm gonna have minus 36 appear over here um right so my 36 <coughs> volt will appear over here uh with a positive let's say if this is a supplier with a positive here and with a negative here. <coughs> so this is our maximum reverse bias voltage that will appear across the diode um all right, so with that, I'm going to finish up this lecture. In the next lecture, we will do another uh, example problem on how to solve these diode circuits. We will also do another application of the diodes, how we can build different logic circuits uh, using diodes. So with that, thank you so much. I will talk with you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.